morning or afternoon whenever you're listening to this to all my beautiful balances welcome to episode number 25 the first one for february now before we get into today's guest i just want to share my little i guess personal touch from the week that has gone now all yogis i'm calling on you before this weekend just passed i had a very very different approach to yoga i just thought it's not for me I can't really do it. It's not something I really enjoy, but my girlfriend and I have been making the effort to try out all these different studios across Sydney. And we've actually been doing little gym highlights of them on our ES Fit Instagram. If you do want to check out any cool studios, definitely keep up with that. There's there's some really, really cool ones that we've been checking out. But anyway, this particular one, it's called Humming Puppy and it was a yoga studio. And literally before we went, I was just like, Oh, let's just go check out the space. Like I'm not that keen for the class, but like I'm open to giving it a go. Anyway, the thing with this humming puppy studio is it's not only gorgeous, like the space is just stunning, but there, I did a class called mellow hum. So throughout the whole class, there was this like vibrational hum, just circulating the room, surround sound speakers, and it was almost pitch black. And we went for about an hour and only held about eight different poses, stretches, And it was a really slow experience. And it was the first time in my entire life that I have had no thoughts come to me. I couldn't even think of something if I wanted to. And the funny thing was when we walked out of the studio, Simone and I literally looked at each other and we were like, I've actually got nothing to say. Like there was nothing in my head. I was so clear, literally felt so, so Zen. And I cannot wait to go back. Like this was my first incredible encounter with yoga and I'm really excited to do it again. So all yogis, please let me know, I guess your experience with it or anyone who has just gotten into it as well, please feel free to reach out. It's something I'm definitely going to be implementing in my at least monthly routine from going forward. And I guess that relates to the whole balance theory because It was the first time I've tapped into my mental health like that. First time I've been able to kind of wipe the slate clean and just have clarity of mind. So I'm really excited about that discovery this week. But now on to today's guest. So I'm interviewing a little bit of a long life friend. We've known each other for quite a few years now. I'd say maybe 10 or so. And my dear friend Giuliano has exited the nine to five and created a whole new realm for himself. He has become his own boss. He has started his own company called Elite Agency Growth, which is all about uh, helping you build and scale your podcasts. And I know he's moving into other avenues, which I won't spoil, but you can definitely check out what he's doing on his gram. But today, what you can expect here is how to develop and maintain a no excuses mindset. This is a guy who's like, no bullshit, cut to the chase. He knows his worth and value and he's unapologetic in exclaiming that to everyone around him. We talk about how to go with the flow and how your belief is grounded and comes from your self-awareness. How do you even become self-aware? Well, that's something we also discussed today, little tips, tricks, and rituals he implements to maintain his self-awareness. And I also really love, we, we do have a little bit of a chat about money and how, yes, while it is the key in a lot of ways to freedom, it doesn't define you. And I think there's a nice distinction there because you can still have goals that are financially motivated, but I think you need to be aware that they do not define who you are. And so we have a really nice conversation about that. And Giuliano actually shares his own experience with losing and earning a lot of money all at once. And how at the end of the day, when you take that away, we have to still think about who are you without those fluctuations because it does come and go. I love this chat. It was really nice chatting to my friend, going a little bit deeper into his story. I hope you all get a lot out of it. Hit subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, you can leave us a review or rating. It would really help us reach more balances. For now, sit back and enjoy. All righty. So before I kind of get into who you are and what you do, I just want to share a little story. So yesterday I messaged you and I said, Hey, I'm going to shoot over some questions for our podcast tomorrow. And you basically said, don't even worry. I go with the flow. And I love that. And I think that's a great way to introduce you. And I just want to know, were you always like that? Or is this something you've learned over time? And how are you even comfortable? You know, a lot of people get scared of just going with the flow, succumbing to external factors like just explain to me a little bit about your attitude with that growing up my grandma always put me in the spotlight she'd be like hey just go and do it who cares so (laughs) i have always had this mindset of like what's the worst that can happen they just laugh at me i don't really care um i'm just very 
you know, I wouldn't even say confident. I said, I just really believe in myself, really yeah. believe in myself. And I think it comes from a lot of self-awareness and a lot of people struggle with being self-aware and, you know, more often than not, they'll say, well, how do you become self-aware? Well, it starts off by first thing in the morning, like having a proper routine. And I think the biggest thing for me was to start meditating. Yes. You know, I used to do five minutes a day. That's nothing. That's actually nothing. But that helped me realize, well, what I'm feeling, what do I usually do when something happens and how do I handle it? So, so if I understand this- things, yeah. So was that a practice you've always had or something you've adopted recently? And, and same, same goes with believing in yourself. Is that a, something you've always held close to you or something you've grown into? I think it's something I've always had. I don't know about you, but growing up, I always felt like I was meant to be someone or something or do something different, right? I don't know what it is. I think it was from the Disney movies. I don't know. I actually have a tattoo of Mickey Mouse now. It's so funny. <laughs> Love um, that. I love Disney because Disney helps you grow and think and dream. But I've always believed in myself. Always. Like I've I've had times this year, honestly, financially so fucked. Can I swear? Yeah, I can. You can swear. Go for it. Everyone always asks me that. Just go for it. (laughs) Um, I've had so many fucked moments this year. Like financially, like, you know, as a business owner, you hit the high of the highs. Like, oh my God, like I made 10 grand this week. And then the next two weeks is like, oh my God, there's nothing coming in. It's scary. And, you know, I had moments where, you know, I invested the money in the wrong place and, you know, all these trading Forex, all these BS that people are promoting now in the online space. And I've lost like money, like a lot of money in one hit. And it's like, oh my God, I've got employees to pay. What do I do now? But it's all a learning curve. Yeah, it's for all sure. a learning curve. You can't be scared. Yes. Now for anyone wondering where this beautiful accent is from, where can you, where, where did you come from? <laughs> it's <laughs> a weird accent, day. isn't it? It's um, from Chile. Chile, yeah. yeah. I came here about 14 years ago to Australia. No English, nothing. Yeah, that would have been a, a little bit of a growth challenge for you in itself. But let's talk a little bit now about what you're actually doing. I know, um, well, I was stalking your Instagram captions because I realized I've never actually read them in the five, year, five to 10 years that I've known you. <laughs> just always wow. give you a like. Okay. I'm like, there's my friend. I'll just give him a like. But I was reading through it Bastard. and I actually read one and it said, this time last year, I was in a job that I hated. My headspace was completely different and I took a risk. So where were you at at that point to and and sort of talk to me a little bit about the journey to where you are now? So um, a lot of people, entrepreneurs or people that want to get into business, my understanding is, is, you know, when you're good at something, people like, especially if you're in a company, people always want to keep you there. Like, don't worry, I've got this plan for you. I'm going to help you grow. I'm going to help you scale, blah, 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 blah all these nonsense bullshit that I call, right? They sell you the dream. You know, your salary is the line that they, they give you so you can stay there, right? It's, it's the sort of sense of security. So once you see and you understand that, all right, it only takes me charging two and a half grand Australian to someone and get five clients a month to be making a lot of money. And then when you, when you make it happen, it's like, boom, why the hell did I even have a job? It's ridiculous. Because ultimately business is all about accountability and discipline. But coming back to the job, like I was stuck in a place where I was in real estate for five years yep. and I was extremely unhappy with my life. I was making all right money at 23. I was making like 125K a year, right? And I was living at home. But the problem with that is that it gave me that sense of security, which is something that I absolutely fucking hate. I hate feeling secure. I hate feeling comfortable, right? Mm. I was recently living in Queensland for six months. Queensland gave me, again, that feeling of being secure and comfortable with that feeling of, oh my God, I've made it. I'm this cool online entrepreneur. We never make it. That's the truth. We never make it. Stop fooling yourself. But how did I escape the nine to five? When COVID hit, I sat down with myself and I thought, you know, if I don't do this now, I'm never going to do it. I need to quit everything. I'm going to stick. I'm going to stay in my room and I'm going to work something out. And I don't know, I just think really quickly. And I thought, I need, to, I need to learn how to make money online. How can I do it? I don't have the money to pay these guys. And I started a podcast. And very much like you, the podcast gave me the opportunity to connect with new people online, right? Yeah. So I connected with all these cool people that were making money online. I was like, oh my God, this is so cool. But then I thought, well, how can I add value and be part of the circle? So every time they would come on my show, I would refer them to someone that had another podcast that's, that was my way of giving value. And then I'd follow up and be like, hey, how did you find it? 
great. And then I'd comment on the post and, you know, keep in touch and blah, blah, blah. And then I thought, well, if I've got all these people coming through my podcast, surely they want to start a podcast themselves or build one, but they don't have the time. You know, I had this question yesterday with a friend I was having. He's like, how did you like quit your job? I just did it. I just did it. I am. Um, there's no feelings. I just did yeah, it. But for a lot of people listening to just do it, it does, it's not a simple, um, perhaps when they're not mm. coming from a place of, of self-confidence or self-awareness. So um, if you could, if you could break down, I guess your psychology or your thought process when it comes to just doing it, like just quitting your job, like, could you maybe pinpoint thoughts or I don't know, maybe emotions that really help you just commit to that decision? Cause it's not, it's not often an easy one to make. Like obviously considering the fact that you were living at home, you did have a little bit of a safety net um, in that respect. So for anyone maybe listening who might be in the same position, but is perhaps doubting themselves, what advice would you give to them? I'd have a little bit of savings behind you. Um, and when I say a little bit of savings, I mean like 3K Australian. That's nothing. I know it's nothing, but it still helps. It gives you that sort of sense of confidence. I had, I had 3,000 in bank account at that time. That's you could maybe even do like three to six months worth salary just as a, as a blanket. You can, but I say fuck that. <laughs> Listen, you know why? Because you're going to figure it out very quickly if you're made for this or not. You can always get another job, right? So I can always get another job. Yeah. But how often can you build your own business and really take care of your future? Yeah, I know. It's, it's very you're going to be different. 25, 26, 27, 28, 30. You're going to have kids now. Oh my God, you've got expenses. Are you going to buy a house? How the fuck are you going to buy a house? Like all these little things that like, you better do it now. Mm. So to me, it sounds like you've got like a no excuses sort of mindset right and apart from um apart from perhaps having been instilled or ingrained from a young age but maybe from your upbringing you're a well of other sounds of it had something to do with it um how have you personally maintained that because i think it's one thing to pick things up when you're little and them to be an innate part of you but you look at like how many siblings right have had exactly the same upbringing and they they grow up to be completely different one perhaps is successful in the traditional financial sense the other one's more reserved, um, you know? So I, I think it really comes down to how you then cultivate and maintain that on your own accord. So talk to me a little bit about your habits um, and, and, you know, just, just ways of thinking or, or conditioning your mindset to maintain that outlook, that confidence. Well, the one word I always use is they sit down. Honestly, I do this every time when I'm stressed or I sit down, I put some, pumped up music and I say over and over, remember who the fuck you are. Remember who the fuck you are. Remember who the fuck you are. That's your mantra. It. That's it. That's my word I use every time. Remember who the fuck you are. And again, I took this from Disney. Oh my God. From the Lion King, right? When he's lost, he's like, I don't know. I what remember to do you. Life. Remember. That's You're it. my son. <laughs> That's it. Absolutely. So, you know, it comes down to really like just again, sitting with yourself and being self aware. You know, I've always been self-aware that my strength is in communicating and building relationships very quickly. So even with the new business that we've got now, like I've told Justin, I said, you take care of all the employees, you manage all finances. My job is to bring in the money. That's it. I don't want to talk to employees. I don't want to manage anyone. All I want to do is focus on networking, bringing the money, and then getting my paycheck at the end of the month. <laughs> Yeah. Well, look, you don't raise an invalid point because I think it's very important, especially if you're, you know, like as a small business, whatever, you have to wear all the hats, right? You have to do all the things at the start. But once it starts growing, I think, I do think one of the many reasons businesses fail or succeed is people not realizing, okay, this is my strength. This is your strength. Let's focus on that. Let's bring in people where our weaknesses are. You know, you can't always do everything. And so being self-aware, knowing what you're good at and capitalizing on that and then bringing in the support where you're not good at is is mm. an excellent way to be. And this not only applies, I don't think, to people running businesses. I think it's your life in general. Like- 100%. In your personal life, if there are certain things you're good at, even just to run a household with a partner or a family, um, any sort of, you know, even friendships, you, some of you are going to be good at some things and others. And that even just comes down to day-to-day -day conversating. So that whole process of being self-aware, we can extrapolate and not only, you know, link it to business, but I think it's a personal thing too. Like it can really help you in your communication with people and enhancing relationships in general too. 
A hundred percent, a hundred percent. And it's something that's so overlooked by a lot of people, right? Mm. What's self-aware? Like Gary Vee talks about it all the time. Self-aware, self-aware, blah, 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 blah. What really is self-aware? It's just being like understanding when you take action, like just understanding your brain and why you take actions and why you do certain, certain things, right? It's that simple. Um, but I wanted to touch on as well the mindset because there's a lot of times where there's a lot of downs, okay? Like don't think that having an online business is easy or it's like, because a lot of people look at me and they're like, oh my God, like I want your life, how oh, you're on the beach. But it's like, dude, like it's, it's not, I'm not always on the beach. You just get to see the good part that I put on Instagram. It's just right? the highlights. I've got a brand. Dude, I just, I just sell, I sell my lifestyle on Instagram. That's my thing, right? I, it doesn't mean that my life is like that, right? I don't show all the bad times. Like there's been times where we're really fucked. Like I've been really, really, really fucked. Like I'm talking about like almost homeless, right? Mm. From trying to make this work. But I'm like, all right, I'll make it work. Yeah. I think there's a, there's a, there's a, um, it's very comforting. And I think for a lot of people listening as well to hear that from someone who, you know, has a, has a very rich following online and, you know, does promote this lifestyle. I think it's a very important reminder for people to think, you know, always remember that it is a highlights reel. And honestly, I've said this so many times when I speak to people online and they all say the same thing, but how many times do we, I don't, I don't know about you, but I do it too. Still, I'm scrolling through and you look at someone's lifetime and you think, wow, I wish I could be like that, forgetting that it is the highlights reel. So that's a, that's an important point to, um, I guess, remember when we're talking about absolutely all of and, that. And, and, yeah, sorry. I agree. And it's like, don't compare yourself to these people on social media. Stop doing that. It's yeah. very unhealthy. It's yeah. so unhealthy. For sure. So when it comes to setting up your day, because you strike me as a person who would have a very rigid morning routine to get your headspace, you know, in the right way. What are some of your non-negotiable habits or things you do daily? All right. I'm going to get stuck into that right now, but I'm going to start by saying this, right? Again, don't believe that everybody follows the same routine every day, right? Don't get of stuck on the not. online stuff. Yeah, Let, yeah. Let's be real here. You know, we might have an idea on how every day goes. And majority of the time, it will go like that, but not always goes like that. We humans, things get on the way. Uh, but for me, like I get started the day before. So the night before, I already know. So when I wake up, I've got my to-do list. It's already done. So I've got my top five that I have to do. And then I have my to-do list at the bottom. If I finish my top five, obviously during the day, then I pick the most important thing from my to-do list and then I put them back on the top five. Um, so I wake up in the morning, usually around 6 a.m. I go for a run because I want to run a marathon. Woohoo! I'm excited about that. Baby steps, um, yep. <laughs> baby steps, yep. Uh, um, then I take, a cold, I take a cold shower every day, no matter what happens. Even if I'm sick, <laughs> I still do it. Um, and then I meditate for five minutes. I still do this five minute thing. I can't, I can't break from it. I can't do more than 10 minutes. I don't know why, but I'm going to get there. Um, and then I sit down, look on my to-do list, understand what needs to get done, make sure that all the clients have been spoken to. And then I've got a meeting with my team immediately. And then after that, like a lot of the stuff that I do now is creative and trying to like grow and network very quickly so we can bring more money to the business. But I've, I've set up the business in a way that it doesn't need me. The, the business runs all the time without me being there. All yeah, the time. Which is what you want. I don't speak to the client. I don't speak to the clients. I don't. My VA speaks to them. So what happens is, and for a lot of people listening, when you're starting an online business, you need to make sure that you can have a business that will be able to run, be run without you. You don't want to be the face of it. You don't want to be like, look at me. I'm the star, right? I mean, it's cool, right? It gives you that sense of pride. But do you want to live with a sense of pride or do you want to live with a sense of freedom? Mm. Right? That's a good question. You, you don't want to, be, yeah, you don't want to be a prisoner to you. You're essentially going to have another job. Look yeah, at which, that, boom. Which in ways. Another payment on Stripe <laughs> just now. Which, um, you know, it sort of defeats that having an online business is a, is a means of attaining a passive income. And so if you are, you know, tied to it and it can't operate without you, you may as well be, in a nine to five, essentially, you know, it's, it's your time. hundred percent. A hundred percent. And it's like understanding, like understanding systems and processes is so important. Like, you know, the client delivery is one of the most important thing. And, and that's what we're most focused about mm. making sure that the client gets what they're paying for and more. 
because that breeds referrals, right? Although you have an online business, you have to still think about it like a physical business. The only difference is that you're based online. And this is the problem that a lot of people that are working online have now. They never had, you know, corporate or professional experience in the workplace, right? So the sort of understanding and expectation towards client delivery and client service, it's very low compared to someone like you, right? That you've got a law degree, that you work in law. So you understand you have, you know, really high expectations. So at the moment that, you know, people like us transition into the online space full time, you know, those client deliveries that are, you know, they're boom, beyond high <laughs> yeah. because we know, and we've got clients that are absolutely filthy rich and they put pressure on us. Once you understand, you feel that pressure, you know, that's, that becomes a new standard. Mm. So um, just going, circling back to your habits. So you have a meeting with your team and then yep. the rest of your day, is it predominantly creative? Um, and, and you sort of just go into the afternoon until you make your to-do list for the next day. Or is there anything else you kind of do? AM is my to-do list and my meetings that I have. And then afternoon is sales. So a lot in the afternoon, I jump on sales calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. I just want to loop back to something you opened with, which I actually think is incredibly important. And that is Mm -hmm. you can have the most immaculate morning routine, something that works for you that sets your day up. But there's the but. Life isn't perfect, you know? And I always like to talk about this really closely with balance because that's all we're trying to do here right we're trying to tap into other people's routines people whether they're entrepreneurs like yourself or professionals or just an everyday person that is similar values you know has similar values to me what we're trying to do here is work out how people manage their balance and i think what you just said there that you know you have your routine but you understand that not every day is perfect is a very nice way to also talk about balance and that is you know you can have an idea of how you want to be balanced that day how you want to set yourself up but at the end of the day when things pop up there's emergencies sometimes you have to literally scrap your whole plan your whole routine and just focus on that one thing that could take you a day or two so when it does come to these moments that kind of throw you a little bit, what, what is, what are your ways of, you know, getting yourself back on track? Or if, if I can reframe, like if something negative happens to you that throws you a little bit, what's your way to overcome it? I just, you know, I'm, I'm really good at this actually. So like, I don't, I don't, it's, it's weird, man. Like when I was in real estate and I started, you know, dealing with, extremely uh, rich clients are, you know, the owners of Macquarie street and the owners that own all those apartments in the opera house, they were beyond, beyond rude. They're the most rudest people I've ever spoken to. Right. I'm talking multimillionaires and billionaires, right? They think they're God's gift to earth. And what I learned at that particular role for a few years is there's no emotions. Like you need to be able to like literally like grab your hand, grab your head and then remove this thing called emotion and then let it sit there while you're working and then at the end of the day, grab it and put it back in your head. Literally when something like that, a really big problem comes, I grab my thing, put my emotion on the side, think about it logically, right? And if I have to take some time off, like let's say five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes to really like forget about it, I do. And then I come back into it and I'm like, what is the solution? Mm. That's it. I never think about the problem. I only think about the solution and Mm. then I move move on. What's like this? on sorry sorry to cut you off because oh, it's important on the onboarding process when everybody comes in the program and whatnot right we have a part where it says specifically to the client i don't want any whinging or complaining i want solutions so if you're upset or unhappy i need you to call me or message me directly and i'll find a solution to your problem we're all adults and you hear we're all professionals here so like that's sort of the standard that we set from the get-go yeah. You know, there's no whinging. There's no little crying here because we're all adults. You've got a problem. Let me know and we fix it immediately. Let's go. I love that. And honestly, like in my personal life, even with my partner, like if we disagree about something, that is just something we are like agreeing in agreeance with. If you don't like something, you come with a solution. Don't whinge about it. Mm. That is like a pet hate of mine. I hate when people complain or lament and there's no proposed alternative. They're just what whinging for the sake of it. So I definitely agree with you there. But I think um, if we just break that down quickly, so the way you kind of deal with, let's just say high pressure, high stress situations 
is I think number one, which I really like is taking a break, whether it's five to 30 minutes, whatever you need to just, sometimes you just need to remove yourself. And that's probably actually what helps you take the emotion out of it. Cause it's very hard to be happy when you're angry. You can't tell an angry person to chill out. Like it's not going to work. And sometimes you just need to step away and take a minute. And the second key thing there is focusing on the solution of the problem. You focus on the problem, you are going to spiral down further into that problem and not be able to think of up because you're looking down and in rather than up and out. So two key things. Absolutely. And it's, it's the same thing in relationships, right? Like people getting into massive fights and arguments with a partner when they're heated. Dude, like when I, when I used to get into fight with my partner, I'll be like, all right, I'm stepping out of the house mm. and I'll go for a walk minute. and then I come back. That's it. I don't, I wouldn't discuss anything. I wouldn't talk back. I would just be quiet mm. because why the hell would I do it? I'm, I'm emotional. I'm a dude. Like why, why am I being emotional right now? I need to mm. come back with logic, you know, and sort out the problem. Like everyone now, this is what amazes me, man. Like everyone's so ready to quit on their business, on the partner when things go wrong. And they forget that when things go wrong, it's just part of the puzzle. It's part of the process. Mm. Like you, you, it's not all sunshine and rainbows. In if anything, like there's more things that go bad than good. Yeah, so and just know that. Yeah, and and to be honest, it's sort of a blessing because think of anyone listening as well. Think of anything that's gone wrong in the last month or two, whether it be in your personal life, professional life, and if you've now you know moved out and away from that problem. Think of like what kind of learning curve that was for you. You know what I mean? If that same problem keeps coming up over and over again, you're probably addressing it in the wrong way. But if it's something you've learned from, you're, you're only going to grow from it, right? And it's the same with relationships. Think of like every time you have a fight or disagreement, like as soon as you resolve that, it's, it's kind of like you feel like you're leveled up, <laughs> even in friendships as well. Um, so I guess that's sort of one of my tactics when it comes to dealing with problems. Like I always try and view it as an opportunity to, you know, like grow and learn from. That's all it is. I wanted to ask you as well, what sort of the things that you've noticed from doing this podcast? Like what's the best thing, the worst thing about, you know, being involved in this space, in your opinion, in the online space? To be honest, there's no worst thing. It's, uh, it's only been incredible because I can connect with people, um, you know, like the, the breadth and, and the range of people I've been able to connect with is not an opportunity I would have had in my nine to five, um, perhaps not even with my e-commerce fitness business either. So the way I can connect with people and, and I mean like connect with them personally, like I'm reaching out to people who are authors of books I've read, um, who are old friends of mine who I'm reconnecting with, you know, and I'm having a conversation with them that I wouldn't have over coffee if we were just catching up on the street. You know what I mean? And, and it's then so that, powerful. Yeah, it's incredible. And even just like a lot of people have then said, hey, you know what, you'd really like this person. They've linked me with that person. So it's just like been the most incredible way to network. And one more thing I'll say about specifically the podcasting space is I do feel like it's a shared community. You know, like when I, when I found out you were doing podcasting, I gave you a call and you didn't hesitate for a second to help me out with queries I had. And I think because with podcasting, it's not like e-commerce where if you've got a listener, they can't also be my listener because there's only one product you know everyone can listen to as many podcasts as they want so it's a very collaborative space um which is something i've really really enjoyed and other like i love how you said that if you didn't have this platform it would be extremely difficult for you to meet these people because it's all over the world like i'm, I'm assuming everyone that you've met as well it's not just in australia right it's no, all no. over the world yeah that's right it's insane like Crazy. think about jj and all these little connections that you've had now mm. It yeah. happens all the time. I'm like, oh, I know this girl. I know this person. Like, it, it, how many times has that happened in the last few months? It's like, yeah. I know this person. You have to connect. Like, it happens all the time. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're the best for that. You always put me in touch with people. <laughs> it's, um, it's a natural thing. You know, I don't think about it too much. I don't think yeah. about it that much. But people need to understand this. Like, you can't grow by yourself. You just can't grow by yourself, man. You can't do this whole entrepreneurship or business or even life by yourself. You need people around you. Yeah, you need and, genuine and, people around you. And those people, you need to be very selective with who they are. Um, and, you know, it always comes mm-hmm. back to, they always say like, you're, you're most influenced by the top five around you. And it's funny when I, you know, perhaps look at my five two years ago to my five today, um, 
you know, it's drastically different. And that only speaks to where I'm at today as well. I have a much more supportive network around me that are definitely on my wavelength that are, you know, much more supportive of where I want to be and things I'm dreaming of and, and stuff like that. Um, but it's, it's so important. Actually, on that point, have you had to, you know, break a tie with someone that's very close to you? I mean, uh, you're nodding your head for everyone not looking at video. Um, you know, like, can you talk to me a bit about that? Because I know a lot of people and I, I'll be the first to throw my hand up and say it's something I've struggled with in the past too. Have you got any tips for anyone needing to shake shake a dead Ooh. leaf off their vine? Ooh, this <laughs> I know is it's my... a bit of a cringy topic, but... No, no, this is my favorite topic. Dude, oh, well, so it's good. very important to your balance. You know, you can be very thrown by negative energy and, and I call them energy vampires. First and foremost, I got to apologize in upfront for what I'm going to say, but I am that ruthless. I just block. I don't say anything. Oh, I you're block. one of those. I'm the silent, yeah, the I, silent ejector. I'm, I'm, you know, the sniper. I just, I block them on Instagram, on Facebook, on everything. They're out. I don't care if they message me, if they call me, they're out because look, why would you like, this is my thought process around this. Like, you know, if they're really not that good for you, right? They're not adding any value. If anything, they're bringing you down. Why do they deserve an explanation as to why they have to be removed from your life? But surely like to get to that point where you just cut, surely you've had a, a, a buildup of emotions. Um, would there have been conversations preceding that? Like surely for of you course. to get to a point where you want to block someone, you would have had the chat of, hey, bro, like that's not cool. Or No, sometimes. Not all the time. No, not all the time. Trust me on that. Not all the time. Like I understand. See, this is the thing. Like I understand where I'm going. And for example, like me coming back to Sydney now, like I'm, I don't want to fucking party anymore. I don't want to drink alcohol anymore. I want to focus on my business and anyone that's not on that same mindset. I don't talk to them. Mm. Like I've got, I've got best friends that I don't talk to anymore. I just don't because they're not serving my purpose. Like I know that they're in a different path and that's cool, but they're not part of, they're not part of my life anymore. You know, they serve the purpose in my life at that certain time. Mm. Now, it's time to move on. Yeah. Call me heartless. I know. But, you know, like, I, 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 otherwise, like, this is the only reason why I've been able to grow so fast because I'm just, I just focus on the people that are going to help me and, you know, we're all going to level up together. Yeah, no, look, I think that's true. Um, but it does take, what do they call them in Spanish? Cajonia? <laughs> Honest. 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 Yeah, I don't speak Spanish. You can tell. I speak Italian and try and translate in my head. Doesn't always work. Anyway, you need to have balls, I think, to do that. And also, it's a certain personality type. But for other people, um, maybe like me, who are a bit more sensitive um, and emotional when it comes to that stuff, to cull people like that is not always as a straightforward process. Do you know why? It's like I know my value, man. I know the things that I had to go through to become this person. And if these people don't see that, like, bad luck. Like, I know what I bring to the table, man. Like, it's the same thing, you know, in the past or, you know, for anyone that, you know, they chase someone that they like and that person doesn't chase you back. It's like, dude, don't do that anymore. If mm. they don't see the value in you, there's 7 billion people that will. Yeah. So Stop what that. are your, like, let's just go with this, maybe. What are two things for you that are immediate red flags for you to think this person's not worthy? Loyalty and respect. If they break any of those two, they're out. Yeah. That also um, underpins trust, which is probably one of my Correct. big ones too. Yeah. Yeah. And I think like, if you have someone that um, I, I think one big sign for me was you feel like you're not, you're purposely not sharing things with them because you're worried or you just don't want their reaction. I think that's another massive, massive sign too. Huge. huge. Or if they're like, oh, like, you know, they're making fun of what you're doing or, that, that's the big one. If they make fun of what you do and they're like, oh yeah, because you work online. Oh my God, yeah, because you have a podcast. Like, fuck you. <laughs> like, you're meant, to be, you're meant to be my friend. You're meant to be rooting for me. You're meant to be sharing my stuff on social media. Hey, mm. here's my friend. You know, he's a, he's a go-getter. Mm. Not be that type of person. Yeah. Why would you want anyone like that in your life? Yeah. No way. It's true. It's true. No way. It's true. All right, let's change topic a little bit now. Can you talk to me about um, the biggest challenge you've ever ever had it could be anything personal professional um and and i just want to know sort of how you navigated through it mm, i gotta think about that i think recently i lost a lot of money like i lost a lot of money man one year 
like a lot of money. Um, and that put me back financially to pretty much when I started with this whole thing, like bad. Like I was two weeks before that, whew, I made the most money I've ever made online. Like, you know, I made a lot of money. Not a lot of money for me in my, in my, from what I made before, right? But then it got to my head. And this is the problem. This is what I discussed with a friend. When you, when you make like a certain figure online, it gets to you because you're like, oh my God, like this is what I always wanted to do. So you start, you get trapped into this mindset of like, you get comfortable again, like you get trapped and you, you form this identity around money and the power that you feel. Cause you're like, Oh, I know that this person makes three and a half grand a month. <laughs> I make three and a half grand per client. You know, like you get this sickening mindset that I absolutely hate. And I felt like I had to go through these in order for me to humble myself and realize, Hey, it's not about the money. Like, yeah, cool. Like no one cares about how much money I make. Like I should be caring just myself about that. Right. But I feel like so many people specifically here in Sydney, right? Doctors and lawyers and whatever, they feel so identified by money. So ident they have this identity. Like I can guarantee you, if they lose all that money, who are they? Can they make yeah. it back? It's a good question. Dude, I lost all that money and I'm about to make it back after two weeks. Hmm. But it's because I put pressure. I'm like, okay, you need to make money now, 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 now. And I kept on saying that. I kept on saying, what, what can I do? Boom idea came up i was like i'm gonna do it now and i did it but not everyone can do that a lot of people can handle the pressure mm. so for me in order to pivot it's like i put myself in a little corner and i'm like you have to succeed you have to you have to you have to you have to it's like somebody pushing you down and drowning you in the water you're like oh, get out get out get out i gotta swim i gotta swim you know mm. it's literally just like that it's very black and white you need to be like there always needs to be pressure as a business owner, if you're taking your foot off the pedal, you're just going to struggle and lose. Like there has to be, you always have to put like, even if it's not you working, maybe the employees, but it have to be full force all the time, mm. full force. So when it comes to setting yourself goals, whether it be personal mm. or professional, do you ever set financial goals or now since you've, you know, had this humbling experience, do you now no longer set financial goals? I'm curious to know. I do. I do get, I, look, I love money. Money's oxygen. I still love money. Key to but freedom. I don't feel correct. And I, but I don't feel identified by it. I'm Jules. You know, I'm the happy guy. I'm the energetic guy. I'm the networker. I'm the outgoing. I'm the sales guy. That's who I am, right? Wherever I go. It's not, I don't mind. Like this is who I am. Oh, oh, oh. Like all these, for example, I'm beginning some people put in Rolex says on Instagram. Like that's all just BS. Like, why would you even go and drop $50,000 on a Rolex if you have less than $100,000 in the bank account mm. or 250 grand? Like it's ridiculous, right? So now I do still set financial goals, but I'm more focused per client. Like I just focus on the client delivery mm. and what we can get back and the client testimonial and yeah. the whole process, man. That's what well, I focus on, on the process. Interesting how you are speaking. I'm actually reading um, Jeff Bezos's book at the moment. It's a compilation of his letters to his shareholders and then a little bit of a breakdown of his strategy and I guess values mm -hmm. and thought process. And a lot of what you're saying um, really comes back to what he's saying, you know, like long-term you can make the money, but in the short term you want to focus on the customer because that was what will get you to the long-term. Um, so I, I think it's interesting um, if we can just have a little discussion about, I think when people are setting goals, they often don't think about who they are or who they want to be. How do you go about setting your goals in line mm -hmm. with your identity? How do you sort of make sure the two well, are right. always aligned? Because I, I feel like sometimes people have an idea of who they want to be, but when they're setting those goals and habits, they're not aligning those with the process of getting to who they want to be. Again, I think two things, right? Again, self-awareness. But second, it's like you need to experience as many things as you can in life to get to this point where you're like really clear about what you want to do. Like a lot of people say, oh, stay in one job forever, like back in the days, and then you'll be sweet. But for me, dude, I've, I've done so many different jobs, mm. so many different jobs, like construct everything. You're only what, 25? I'm 25. I've, honestly, I reckon I've done over 50 job, different jobs. Seriously, like, and I've never lasted a long time in them. And I always wondered why. It's because I was never meant to be there. They were meant to teach me a certain thing, right? So my advice for people would be, again, like, go and experience life. Get out there. Go and travel. Work at a coffee shop and then at a bar. Like, experience. Don't just be like, I'm going to go to uni. 
I'm going to get a job and I'm going to buy a house. Yeah. And then life should be sorted. That's good. Mm-hmm. But in saying that, like, that, me, that life yeah. trajectory for a lot of people is something that they genuinely strive for. And that's what genuinely makes them happy. And I don't personally think there's anything wrong with that, yeah. but I do think if you're the kind of person who feels unsatisfied in your role, or you feel like, there's just something more out there for you, then this is a sort of conversation and, and something you should truly be listening to and, and, and really thinking about how you can experiment yourself. I love that you bring that up because I struggle with that a lot. Like I struggle to understand how can anyone else not see this? Like does it happen to you? It happens to me a lot. Like I'm like, I, I've got, for example, I've got one of my buddies, right? And he's like, I'm very analytical when I make decisions and I'm thinking there, I'm like, why? Like, why wouldn't you just go bankrupt and see what it feels like? <laughs> Literally like that's, that well, goes to my Why wouldn't you want to go bankrupt? Like, well, uh, I think, I think everyone's uh, appetite for risk is slightly different uh, and it comes yeah. down to their responsibilities yeah, um, and, and values. And, and again, I, I do think that people's look, this is, to be honest with you, once, once you sort of get a taste for working for yourself, you know, pushing, pushing the ceiling for how much money you can make, those sorts of things, you do have a moment when you're like, why isn't everyone else doing this? But I do think the world would not function if we were all like that. You do need people who, you know, the world has a place for people who are more complacent and just happy to do something they're really good at for a long period of time. You know, like we wouldn't, you know, you're creating now jobs through your business and you need people like that to work for you. Your business would not function if there weren't people like that in the world, you know, there's a place for everyone. And I do think that the kind of life that you're striving for that maybe even I'm striving for, that's not something that's for everyone. It's a lot of stress, a lot of responsibility, and that's not, that's not happiness or success for a lot of people. A lot of people would just get freaked Mm. out and, and just turn the other way. And I completely understand that you know, like what, what keeps me going is being challenged. What keeps someone else going is knowing they can just work a job and then go home and chill out and do whatever they want and not have to think about it out of hours. So I think it really comes down to like everything you've been saying today, being self-aware, knowing what it is you want. But in response to your question, I think there's a place for everyone. And I think the world would not operate with all I agree. in the world. I agree with that. But I want the listeners to think about this because a lot of you guys, you know, would have jobs. Don't lie. There's a moment in your life when you go home and you lay down and then you see someone else having their own business and you think, maybe I could do that too. Maybe that could be my life. Maybe, you know what? Maybe it's worth me taking a risk for a year and seeing where it goes. And then maybe we can go on holidays and then maybe I can travel the world and get paid while I do it. Is it, is it a scam? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe I should just go back to my job. I know a lot of people go through these because I went through it myself for a long time. But let me tell you, now sitting on the, on the other side, it's possible, dude. So if, if you wanted a sign, this is your sign to take action. Like, you know, you can have all these dreams and all these amazing ideas. Like, look at you. You had that idea of starting your amazing e-commerce business now, right? And look at you. Look how it's going. It's amazing. I'm so proud of you. You know, you're doing so well with Simone. It's fantastic. So, you know, there's only growth from here. But this is the thing that I think and I've got a tight in my arm. It's, you know, die with memories, not with dreams. Yeah. I love that. And I think a key thing, um, and I do love that you've said that and it is, it's nice when you're waiting for us. I, I hope anyone listening who was waiting for a sign that that was it for you. Um, but it, it's, it's sort of that thought process of there's a seed, right? You can choose mm. to nurture and allow it to grow or you can just leave it and it, it will never ever come to fruition and you have that choice and often it is it's this sense of fear or like oh i would love to do that but i could never do that and and you know what like if it's comforting for anybody listening we were all thinking that at the start too but there's a difference between thinking that could never be me or thinking how is that going to be me and then like you said before you can't get through life without help and it's about just linking up with people who have done it before watching the YouTube. There's so much on the internet. Honestly, you can Gosh. learn anything from YouTube these days from Google. Uh, it's just about putting the time aside. Uh, mm. I think there's a big part letting your ego down as well, because yeah. you have to be vulnerable. You have to understand your weaknesses. You have to go through rough moments to get there. 
hundred percent. And you know, one thing that I do as well, it's, I don't look at myself as this is who I am. It's like I move myself and I look down. I'm like, this is Jules. Like what does Jules need right now? Mm. What can he do to become more successful? Right. I always look at myself. I don't I always look at myself like on a helicopter view looking mm. down, like what does this man have to do today, tomorrow, next week, next month to reach that sort of level of fulfillment that he's, that he seeks. Mm. Right. So don't look at yourself and be like, it is me. Like remove yourself and be like, okay, what does this person need to become the person that, you know, I want to be. I do that. I do that every day. Yeah. I don't think about me as I'm this human. I think about me on, as an outsider. Why do I have to feed this human so he can then become the best possible version of himself? Yeah. Nice. It's a good way to, to cause yeah. you take, um, I guess any personal bias out and you can just look objectively at, okay, this is the trajectory or this is what I want it to look like. Oh my gosh. A hundred percent. Like think about it. I was in the Gold Coast, right? Like, and I was partying so hard. I was living the best life. And then I removed myself sadly. And I was like, okay, why do I need now? I need to, I need to ground myself. I need to stop partying. I need to refocus on my business. So what did I do? I grabbed my car, left my place and came back to Sydney like this quick. Cause I knew that, you know, there's two things in life, right? There's things that you like and there's things that you need. You need to more often than not choose the things that you need because mm. the things that you like might not get you where you need to go. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that is a lovely place to end our discussion today. Even though we could probably talk all day. I know you could probably talk to Ooh, a yeah. wall if it spoke back to you. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, I probably can. <laughs> But if anyone wants to connect with you or I guess um, reach out, chat a bit more about your journey or just, you know, get to know you a bit more, where's the best place I can do so? On the gram. So it's On the IG. Juliana Gonzalez AU. Just leave the link in the description. I will put it down below because, you know, for non-ethnic people, that might be difficult to decipher. Mm. <laughs> I've put subtitles. Yeah, but, <laughs> correct. Yeah. But you guys just go ahead. Honestly, shoot me a DM guys. Um, I'm not going to try you. I'm going to try and say, sell you anything. I don't really care. I just want to help. If you have any questions on how to get started more than happy to give you free advice, like whatever, like just shoot me a DM. Let's connect. Yeah. And um, for anyone listening, who's actually thinking about starting a podcast, um, of course, like you can always reach out to me as well, but Juliana is the man to get that um, rolling as well. Even, you know, to just set you in the right direction. He's a very genuine mm. human um so you know thanks erica no you so won't nice. regret reaching out at all but thank you so much for your time and i look forward to seeing what 2021 brings you let's go Woo! let's get it done ciao ciao and that's a wrap for this week balances thank you so much for tuning in i hope you found this episode useful to some degree in either steering or determining your definition of balance today as always, the biggest compliment for us is if you share this episode with someone who you feel might need it, or if you're on Spotify, you can click follow or on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a rating or review. If you have any suggestions for up and coming podcasts, feel free to shoot us a DM or an email. Our Instagram is at the balance theory and our email is the balance theory podcast at gmail.com. Otherwise, you've always got the option of subscribing to our mailing list. We only send you email reminders when the episodes drop so you get them fresh out of the oven. No annoying spam, we promise. I hope you enjoy the rest of your week and until next time, stay balanced. Stop, stop, stop.